I know the song, and I was just messing up. <laughs> but I did it. I did it well earlier. I did it well earlier, and that's all that matters. I'll do it well during the service. Turn our eyes quick. Let's try it. In the version of this one. Yeah, I know it. Son of God gave his life for us, and our measureless debt was erased. Behold, you our Savior. I'll just skip, yeah, yeah skip for now, yeah. but during the actual thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. do this for us. <clears throat> Turn your eyes to the throne. Our King will return for his own. Every knee will bow, every tongue will shout. All glory to Jesus Okay, sounds good. Uh, turn your eyes is number four. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, Lord, I need you. Amazing grace is all three of us. Uh, only Holy God will be.
Play the background for you. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel.
Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church this morning. We are thrilled to be worshiping all together. And to those of you worshiping online with us, we are thrilled that you are joining us as well. Well, this morning, if you got your worship folder, you'll notice there is a cliff scene. Beautiful. We got the sun behind it, a little river valley. But what I want you to notice is the gap between the two, the two sides of the cliff. Because that's what we're talking about this morning as we look at our worship series, the attributes of God. We're looking at the grace of God and the fact that we as sinful humans are on one side and God is the other. How we bridge that gap is where Christ comes in. In fact, all of the Bible is full of what I like to call gift language, where Christ gives us great gifts to reconcile himself to us. And so as we worship this morning, listen for, the, listen for the gift language where Christ is giving good gifts to all his people because he loves you and he wants to give you good gifts. And so as we begin this morning, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, that you are the God who is the giver of good gifts. You are the God who cares and loves us. And I pray that you will calm our hearts and minds as we come before you today to worship you. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us begin by standing and singing our opening song, Lord, I Need You. I am free of holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I My righteousness, oh God, how I need Thee. Let my stand, I'll fall on You. Jesus, you're my hope and my song 
Let us continue worshiping by reading responsively from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The Lord decrees, the decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. my heart to feel and grace my fears relieve how precious still that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are
soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. My chains are gone, I've been set free. God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, and like a flood, His mercy Unending love, amazing grace. Let us say together the prayer of the day. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to freely receive your grace through faith. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. The second reading is from John, chapter 1, verses 9 through 17. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. All right. I want to call forward any kids in the congregation who want to come up for our children's moment. Come on up. Hello. I love your guys' excitement. Thanks for coming up this morning. Thank you. Well, as you can see, I am hiding something in my hand. You maybe have already seen it. Colin, you think you know what it is? <gasps> what? It's Play-Doh. I saw a little thing right there. You, you saw right away. You were like, what's he got there? And you found Play-Doh. Uh, have you ever opened a Play-Doh? What's inside of Play-Doh? Play-Doh. Play-Doh is inside of Play-Doh. That's right. So I got some Play-Doh. What color is it? What do we got here? Blue. That's right. We got blue. And let me see. I got a little bit. Let's see. What can I do with the Play-Doh? Ariana? Mold I can mold it into stuff. So like right now, what do I got? A ball. A ball. What can I do with this? I can make it into a rectangle. I can make it into a rectangle if I wanted to. I can make it into a square. I can make it into a square. I can make it into a, let me see here, a hot dog. Exactly. 
<laughs> little gumballs. Let me see. I could also, let me see here. Let's see if I can do this here. All right. Fold it a little bit. Make it a little bit. Mm, mm, mm. A mini gumball? Maybe a little tiny one. Hold on. I am making, you're right, I am making a bowl. That's right. See? Got a, like, all right, it's a blue bowl. That's right. If I had more play, though, I could make a cup or I could flatten this out and make a pancake. Yeah, um, have you guys ever played with play, though? Yeah. What's the coolest thing you have ever made with play, though? Yeah, yeah Colin? A hot dog. A hot dog. All right. You, a person that lasted a while. Yeah, Ella. Um, nothing because I don't play with play. Nothing. You don't play with play at all. Marin? Cupcakes. You've made cupcakes. Ooh. Did you use different colors? Um, so you like had like white cupcakes with like sprinkles. You could make other little tiny. Mm-hmm. Maybe next time you can make sprinkles. But don't mix them together because then when you put them together, then yeah, it, becomes, yeah, it, becomes it becomes brown eventually yeah. if you mix yeah. your colors. So the reason I'm playing with Play-Doh is it's kind of like have you ever actually seen someone work with, like, real pottery? Yeah. You know, like, I'm, I, I'm like, this is like pretend pottery. You know, I could leave it out, and it would eventually dry up, and I could maybe put a little tiny bit of cereal in it and use it. No. But, yeah, Ariana? Does it count if you use, like, clay and art? Yeah, that does. So oh, you've okay. used clay and art? Yeah. Because, like, real potters use clay. Yeah, Jace? I used a pottery wheel before. You've used a pottery wheel. That's incredible. Was that, did you make shapes? What did, did you make anything out of it? You made a cup. Sometimes you make vases out of it, cups, bowls. Like some people are really, really good and make all sorts of things. But here's the question. The Play-Doh, looking at the Play-Doh, all right? What was the Play-Doh before I started working with it? Yeah, Ariana. It was just in the Play-Doh stage. It was just in the Play-Doh. Was it already a cup? No. Did it ask to be made into a cup? No, it can't talk. It didn't ask to be made into a cup. You're right. It was just there, and then I came along, and I crafted it into what I wanted it to be, and I wanted it to be a bowl, and now we have a bowl, and what's the bowl best used for? Being a bowl, right? Yeah, what were you going to say? Holding food. Holding food, Ariana? That's right. Soup in a bowl is better than soup on the plate. So it's a great thing to have. So this reminds me of a verse we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. And the verse says, You are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do the things he created you to do. So who created us? God created us. That's right. We didn't, we didn't ask to be created. He created us. And he made us special. He made every one of us special, and he gave us a special thing to do. Just like I made this bowl, which can hold, like, soup. Now, if I had made a plate, like Ariana said, I wouldn't be very good. Like, if this became a plate, let me make it a plate. All right, now it's a plate. I I should not try and hold soup because it's now a plate. But if I was created, because I was created to be a plate. So God creates each and every one of us special and unique. And that means when we are following him, when we are following what he has planned for our lives, we're doing what we were created to do. When we do what we, when we follow like our own paths and not what God has created us to do, it's like we're trying to be plates holding soup. It kind of works, but does it work the best? Not really, does it? Yeah. It's just like you can't use a fork for soup. That's right. But that means we are all created by God, formed by him, special. And our specialness and the specialness is completed when we do what he has called us to do. Because that's what we were made to do. It's like we were made to follow him and how he created us. And I think that's pretty cool and pretty special. Because that means he has a plan for every one of us. And he looks at each one of you and says, you are unique. I made you special, and I've got amazing things planned for you where you get to do, follow my will. And so that's why it's so important, but also so really neat when we follow what God wants for us because it's what we're made to do. All right, now what do I got? A ball ball again, so I can put it back in. All right, so we can play with that later. Well, thank you guys for watching me play with Play-Doh. I appreciate that. 
But uh, you guys, your guys' answers to the questions are great. It should have been like a sphere or oval around. It should have been a sphere or oval when I put it in. I know. All right, let's pray, and then you can head back to your spots. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for making each and every one of us unique and special and creating, creating us with a special plan in each and one of our lives. I pray that you'll help us now always to follow you and seek you out because when we do, we are doing what we are created to do. We thank you now, dear God, for all you've done for us and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you all can head on back to your spots. This morning, I want to bring us back to 
I think something that we look forward to, especially when we're in the depths of winter, whether it's spring break time, looking forward to summer, or getting away in the winter, it's heading out on vacation. Heading out on vacation, whether it's going to the big city, going skiing somewhere, finding somewhere warm, maybe overseas. I've hit each one of, the, each one of those postcards. Um, if you were to like, uh, look up uh, best vacation spots in the U.S., I think there's a lot of national parks that get hit, whether it's Glacier or Grand Canyon. But there's one, one truth I have learned as I've gotten older. And it seems like the older I get, the best, it seems like the best part of the trip sometimes is coming back home. Ever, anybody ever feel like that? Where you, like, you get home and you're like, man, it's good to be home. You got your own bed, you got your own stuff, you know. Well, it was fun to be away, but it's, it's nice to be, it's nice to be home. And that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning as we look at the next attribute of God, which is grace. Whereas when we find God's grace, it's, it's like coming home. It's like coming back to what, well actually it's exactly like coming back to what you were created to be. And so, we've been in this series, The Attributes of God, and we're looking at the attributes of God because we've seen this slide the last couple of weeks. As A.W. Tozer says, Christianity at any given time is as strong or as weak depending upon her concept of God. Which is interesting. He goes on to say, I insist on this and have said it many times. The basic trouble with the church is her unworthy conception of God. It is good to know what God is like. In fact, we are called to explore it deeper and deeper through the rest of our lives. And so we started this series looking at the immensity of God, seeing how he, is, he holds everything in his hands, and he's also down with the very smallest particles, yet he's inside those and outside everything. He's immense. He's there. And that should give us comfort because he is in and around everything. And then last week we looked at God's goodness and justice, asking the question, how can a God that's so good who cannot have, any ju- have anything unjust allow us in his presence? And we found the answer was in his mercy. And this week we look at the grace of God. God's grace, God's grace which calls us home, calls us back to what we were created to be. And our scripture verses, too far, our scripture verses come from the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And so I'll be reading from that this morning, and you can either look it up in your Bible or grab the purple sheet, and it's on the back of the other scriptures that we saw. So Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 say, As for you, You were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. But... Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. Transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so as we see here, Paul talking to us about the grace we didn't deserve. Now grace, it sounds a lot like mercy, and it is, it is similar. It is similar, but it's not quite the same. You see, like mercy, God's grace flows out of his goodness. He didn't have to show us grace. 
but because of his goodness, it flows out of it. In fact, God looks at us with mercy and gives us his grace. Grace is that tangible gift he has given to us because of his mercy. And that's the thing that we receive that we need so much. Now, God, as we saw last week, he's consistently merciful. If we look at the Old and New Testament, he consistently is talk- his mercy is talked about pretty consistently all throughout both the Old and New. But if we were to look at grace and see about the times grace is talked about, well, something else kind of happens there. We see that in the New Testament, grace is talked about about three times more in the New Testament than the Old. Now, that's not to say that God's not offering grace in the Old Testament, but it does point us to the fact of where grace comes from. It comes from Christ. You see, the means of grace for all people is revealed in the New Testament, revealed in Christ. And so Christ is the channel through which grace flows to all people. Now, like I said, that doesn't mean that the Old Testament was without grace. In fact, we saw in the reading this morning that God looked on Noah and had grace on him. Hundreds of years before Moses was given the law and the Ten Commandments, God showed grace on this earth. In fact, all of creation was shown grace after, after the fall when sin entered. God showed grace by holding back his judgment. And so grace is shown throughout all creation. That's the unique thing about Christ, having grace flow out of Christ, because it goes for the present moment when he died, he gave grace. It flows to the future, to all of us who need his grace, and it also flowed backward through time as well. You might be asking, how is that possible? That's a great question. And that's one of the great mysteries we get to live with. How does God do that? Our God is a God of mysteries. In fact, this grace came because of the fact that God became man and lived on earth. Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man. Able to do what was necessary so that he could bear the punishment of our sins. How does God become fully man and yet still be both? Again, one of the great mysteries of God. But we know the result. The result is that Christ died and rose again for our sake. And because of that, all of heaven cries, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Whose words are being sung in heaven. We know that from Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the Lamb who has been slain for our sake. And so grace, how it works, how it even is possible, is a mystery to us. And yet, it doesn't mean we can't know some things about it. In fact, today I'm going to talk about three truths of grace, or we'll call them grace truths. And so we've got three. Number one, no one has ever been made right before God except by grace. No one has ever been made right by God or received salvation, been rescued from sin and death, except by grace. We know that right from our our scripture. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It's one of those verses that you just want to like always have like in your mind, at the tip of your tongue. Just, it's that, that, those verses of complete assurance. We have been given grace. This is the bedrock of what we put our faith in. We are made right before God through grace alone. The early reformers had a term for it. Sola gratia, grace alone. If you ever hear about the solas of the Reformation, that's one of the key pillars that they're talking about. And the great thing about God's grace is that God's grace is infinite, never-ending. It never ends. It is always there waiting to be received no matter what has ever happened, no matter our past, no matter 
what obstacles we think we've put up between us and God, God's grace is infinitely greater than that. There is no distance that we can put between God and ourselves that when we turn to him, grace can't cover. That is one of the most reassuring things that we can grasp onto. There is no distance between us and God that when we turn towards him, his grace doesn't cover over. I mean, just think about it. Think about who, who would deserve grace the least in your, mind, in your mind. I mean, something that comes to my mind is someone who deserves grace the least is someone who would hate God's people, would actively, you know, be teaching against them and searching them to be able to, like, imprison them and maybe torture and even kill them. I mean, I would think that would be a person who would definitely not deserve God's grace. And yet God did des- show that person grace because that was the Apostle Paul. He's the one who wrote these words. That's what he was doing before Christ appeared to him on the road to Emmaus. He was that hunter of Christians. He is the one who knows more than most. Wow, grace truly does cover all. And that's because the ground at the foot of the cross is level for everybody. All can come to the cross. And so how do we know that God's grace is unlimited? Because if it was limited, he wouldn't be God. And he is God. And he gives unlimited grace. In fact, all of creation receives some of God's grace just by the fact that we are here. Though we deserve immediate judgment, we are here. So all of creation was given God's grace. But when God's grace is joined with faith, something incredible happens. Something new happens. He gives new birth. He gives new life. Because it says, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Faith in Christ. Which brings us to our second grace truth. Which is that grace only comes from Jesus. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. If we search anywhere else, we won't find it. If we try and do anything else to get God's grace, we will fail. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. We can't be good enough for it. It is a gift. God's grace is a gift. And it's a gift from Jesus Christ and only from Jesus. That is is where it comes from. You know, it's interesting. Other religions have prophets that tell humankind how to get to God, but not Christianity. Because Christ knew we can't get to God, so instead he came to us. He came to us, and he is offering us his grace It's interesting. You can make a little acronym. That's not right. Grace. It's where you take each letter of a word and make it, or and make it into a word. So that would be grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Is a is a fun way to kind of look at that and hold on to it and grasp it and see the gift that we have been given through Christ. It's God's riches at Christ's expense, and He's given it to us through all of history. He gave it at the beginning when Abel sacrificed the lamb on the altar. That was pointing forward towards the lamb of God sacrificing himself for all sins. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a stretch there. It doesn't say that in Genesis that Abel did that. And you're right, it doesn't. But it does say that in Hebrews that that's what Abel was doing with the lamb. And so grace came from before the foundation of the world, from Christ. In fact, grace was planned by God from the beginning because God is grace. He doesn't just have it. He doesn't just have lots of it. He is grace, and because he is grace, 
before he looked out at all the creation he made, even before he even started, before he said, let there be light, he knew what was going to happen. He knew what it would take. And he knew the grace that he was going to give. And he created us anyway, knowing all that was going to happen. Because he is grace. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. He loves us that much. And because the grace of God only comes from Christ, we know that it only comes when we stand in the shadow of the cross. It's through the cross of Christ, him crucified for our sake, that we are able to receive that grace. So that now all who call on the name of Jesus will be saved. That's what Peter was talking about when he was preaching to the people in Acts chapter 4. He said, There is no name under heaven by which men may be saved except Jesus Christ. Grace only comes from Jesus. This is why we worship him. It's why we talk about him. It's why he's so important in all of history. Because he is the one place we can get the grace that we need from. And so God has given us that which we need, grace, through Jesus Christ, which brings us to grace truth number three. The story of grace is to be shared. God has blessed us with the gift of being able to share God's grace with others. We have too much of good news. This news is too good to hold to ourselves. Instead, instead, this is to be shared. God celebrates whenever a man or a woman receives the grace of God. Because when they do, they return home. They are being reconciled to their true home, which is with Christ Jesus. And so God has given us his unearned grace that we get to share with others. It's the gift of doing what we were created to do because we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he prepared in advance for us to do. He has prepared us in unique ways to be able to share the good news of who Jesus is with those around us in different ways, in unique ways. We have been gifted with sharing Christ with others We get to speak to the truth that when when people feel like they don't measure up, well, number one, we don't. Ephesians chapter 1 says, we were dead in our transgressions. We don't measure up. I mean, I think the high rates of anxiety and depression that just are exploding through our culture show us we know in ourselves we don't measure up. And yet it doesn't end there because there's good news. That's not the end. We have grace offered by Christ that not, does not need to be earned, but just rather freely received. It doesn't depend on us performing. It doesn't depend on us doing enough. We get to receive his free gift, the free gift of salvation. And so we know that because Christ died, we don't have to. We know that because he rose again, we too will rise again with him. And that we will get to go home with him because he has extended his free gift of grace to us through faith. And so we get to turn our eyes to Jesus. We get to turn our eyes to Jesus because we were created to be with him. We were created to live with him as our true home. If we look anywhere else, anywhere, we will never find it. It will always leave us empty and broken. But when we come to Christ, we come to the place where we truly belong. We come to his good and loving and merciful arms. And the incredible thing is, is that because he is grace, he doesn't just have grace, but because he is grace, he has grace enough 
for you and for me and for anyone else who turns towards, who turns towards him. That is why that is why we can worship him. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, that you are the God of all grace. You are the God who looked upon us, and though we were sinners and undeserving, you gave us your free gift because you are good and you are merciful. And I pray now, dear Lord, you will help us to not only receive your grace, but to share it with others so that others may receive your free gift as well. And help us now to continually worship you for the amazing grace that we continually receive. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, fill us with your Son's zeal for your house, that we may cast every idol from our hearts and be devoted to you and your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, your Son's cross and crucifixion is folly to the world, but it is the source of repentance and forgiveness for all his people. Preserve the preaching of the cross in our midst that from this life-giving tree we would continually receive your faith-preserving gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, your steadfast love in Christ is good. Turn in your abundant mercy to all who suffer in our midst. We lift up those that we name silently in our hearts at this time. Lord, we pray that you will deliver them, grant them healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you bless this day and make it holy with your word and the gifts of your altar. Grant that we may come before your presence, not boasting of ourselves, but of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us stand, and we will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen congregation may be seated. At this time, I want to invite all of those who love Christ as their Savior to come and receive communion this morning, because as we receive communion, we proclaim Christ crucified, both here and outside these walls. And Kevin, would you mind assisting me with uh, the communion wine? We will start by serving those on the piano side, and follow that up by serving those on the pulpit side.
Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ has now given you his holy body and blood through which he has made full satisfaction for all your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto everlasting life. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, that we come before you at the communion table, receiving your body and blood, but receiving your grace to us, the unearned, undeserved precious gift that we could never earn. We thank you now, dear Lord, that you have given it to us freely out of your goodness and love for us. And pray now, dear Lord, you will help us to not only receive it, but allow us to explore that meaning in our lives daily for the rest of our lives as we experience your love deeper and deeper each and every day. We pray these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've got a couple of announcements, but the first thing I wanted to do is invite Hannah up. Uh, she's going to come and share with us.
If you don't know Hannah, Hannah is from Alliance Music Therapy, and they, she has been uh, seeing clients in our fellowship hall on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. And so you can come to the lectern here. We've got a microphone for you, Hannah, that you can use. But she's going to uh, just share who she is and what Alliance Music Therapy does so that you can kind of know a little bit about this partnership we have between ourselves and Alliance Music Therapy. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Hannah, like Pastor West said. Um, I have been seeing music therapy clients in your church space down the hall for the past two months, so I'm excited to come in and introduce myself a little bit. Um, I live in Minneapolis. Um, I went to school at Gustavus Adolphus College in St. Peter for music and psychology, and then later did a program in music therapy at St. Mary of the Woods. So if you haven't heard of music therapy before, um, Pastor Wes has probably mentioned it, but um, it's usually defined as the intentional use of music interventions or activities to work towards therapeutic goals by a, a credentialed professional. So that means using um, evidence-based practice of, of all those elements that we all love of music and that you probably all have a relationship with as you hear it every Sunday as well using those um, elements to accomplish and meet the needs of, of clients that come in for treatment. So I'm able to see um, some folks from the outer western suburbs that can come into your space and, and receive treatment here. Um, most days that means me playing my piano or ukulele. I usually bring a bag full of fun instruments for the kids to play and, and we can work towards those goals depending on their diagnosis. So I see people with um, autism, with developmental disabilities, um, anyone from, I think my youngest is about two, and I see adults as well. And so they come in and can work on things. If it's um, someone with autism, it's usually um, social skills, communication skills, using music to practice taking turns or, or working together or um, expressing themselves creatively, things like that, where I'm able to support them and in, in working towards their treatment plan. So um, it's been really amazing to use this space. I wouldn't be able to see all these people otherwise, and they're all becoming very comfortable coming into your church, and they love looking at the monthly um, event calendar, seeing what you've been up to or what's coming up next. And um, using that space that they know is, is there for them to, to work on their goals through music. So thank you so much um, for having me here this morning to, to meet you all. Um, I'll be back, um, back after the service if you have questions for me. Um, I put some flyers out for the, the company, the organization that I work for, which is Alliance Music Therapy. Um, so if you're interested in learning more or if you have someone that you know or you think would benefit, um, that would be amazing to get connected with Alliance. Um, feel free to reach out. Um, and I'll be grateful to continue using your space. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hannah, for just yeah, being here and being able to share with us. And we've loved having you uh, just you know, be able to use our space as well. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful partnership. So as Hannah mentioned, she'll be hanging around after uh, the worship service. So you can, if you have questions and you want to talk to her, just to ask about what she does or just to get to know her, feel free. She would love to talk with you. Um, she had mentioned also, we've got you know, our bulletin boards over there, and we've got right now a goodness of God bulletin board that needs your help in filling it up. So ways that you have seen God interact and how you see the goodness of God either out in creation or in your life, we've got post-it notes there for you to share. And we want to fill that up through these weeks of Lent and past Lent as well. But just write something down, put it on the bulletin board. We would love for you to share with us. Speaking of Lent, just a reminder, we've got our worship series, uh, our Lent worship series coming up on Wednesdays. So we start with the uh, supper, the Lent soup supper at 5.30, and then, which is a gift to the congregation. And then we follow that up with our uh, Lent series uh, where we're looking at God's will being done in different parts of our lives. And so we hope that you will join us with that. And then just uh, for the other announcements or other things coming up, please Look at the worship folder. They've got some exciting things coming up in the next few years, a few weeks, years and weeks. Well, let us stand, and we will receive the benediction. Now, may the love of God the Father and the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all as you go from here. Amen.
blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.